welcome to the Metal Voice for the first time. Ronnie Romero himself. Bada bing. Hello. The man of many hats. Yes, yes, yes. Many tricks. But many tricks, many tricks. So the new album, Alan, before I butcher it, it's Too Many Lies, Too Many Masters that was released on September the 15th. Your first solo album. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. So, After. so who is your masters and who's lying to you? What's what's the problem? What's going on? Um, well, uh, that's actually the perfect resume of my professional career. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that came to my mind like uh, like a year ago. I was, uh, I was going through a kind of a difficult time um, in my personal, personal life. But it also was affecting my professional life. Even even now, you know, it's like after more than two years uh, since I since I saw my kid uh, for the last time, and I don't have the chance to to meet very often. So so yeah, it was complicated. And at the same time, I was having some problems on the on my professional life. So I was thinking how how disappointed you get in the music business very often, you know, and. and and that's why for me, like I got this too, there's too many lies around. So <laughs> from that point, I started to think also of how much people you have around telling you what to do. So I thought of this, uh, too, there is too many masters around. You know, it's too much people like telling you uh, what to do and they know about your career and about your life more than you. They think so. so yeah. They tell us what to do all the time on their show. Yeah, so, yeah. So that was the there was every the, uh, everybody's a professional, right? Everybody's a professional. Everybody, no everybody, th everybody's like a pre president and a professional, and everybody thinks they know better than everybody else. Exactly. I like the title. Like, it's very therapeutic, I guess, for you, right, to release this. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, yeah, good, yeah good. it was. Uh, I will say there is an statement, but uh, uh, it's not that important anymore for, for me. So mm -hmm. it's just something like, okay, I say it, and then um, and now I can move on. Like, it's That's like good. saying, it is what it is. Right? Yeah. Too many lies, too many masters. It is what it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's sad. It's sad, but funny. Okay, well, I mean, the but, cool thing is... this. Okay, go ahead, Alan. Sorry. No, I just want to know, like, okay, too many masters. Does this mean Ronnie Romero is doing his thing now? You've been in... Oh, my gosh, it'll take 15 minutes to name all the bands, but does this mean that you're the master of your future and this is what you're going to be concentrating on, Ronnie Romero and his solo career well i i always been um uh, that's the main thing that the, uh, this it's just a mistake that the people think uh i was not doing my uh or having control of my career through the years i mean i was i was lucky enough to you know to have to have uh richie blackmore michael schenker adrian vandermeer and all those great guys working with uh through richie the Faulkner. Richie Faulkner and uh, Tony Hernando and Leo Leone from Gotha and many, many more, you know, and, 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 uh, but, but at the same time, it's something like the people, they never realized. I, I was always writing music, uh, on the first two or so black albums. I, I did like four songs. Um, I, I did a couple of songs with Michael Schenker on the last two albums, you know? So, um, I think I was not recognized as a songwriter until now that I came with all my own material. So um, it's funny. It's funny because you know the people like you saying saying like, oh, finally he's doing, uh, finally he's writing a song. Because I was doing that since since many years ago. You know? But uh, you know it's funny at the same time. Well, tell everybody you know um, that that ha have not heard the music yet. Describe it. Is this a Dio Rainbow ish era type music? Is this? Uh, I don't well, know, Judas Priest power metal or what is? I would say it in, in two ways. The first one, if you if you heard if you listen already the first two covers albums I did, mm -hmm. uh, you will find all those influences on this album. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. Like yeah. the uh, the uh, covers I did on those two records are totally related with all my influences, so the directly influences. Uh, but also, it is true that what I, when I talked to the guys uh, with Andy, the drummer, and Jose, the guitar player, about uh, about the songwriting, I told them I really want to go in the uh, direction of kind of a Dio solo career, especially Look Up the Wolves of Last in Line kind of album, mm -hmm. 
even deal with Black Sabbath, uh, that kind of riff and kind of melodies, you know, that you have like a heavy metal, uh, great riffs and the great drumming and, 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 and all this stuff, but also very melodic and, and something like the people can remember and sing together on the shows. Because it's also very, very focused on, on, on the life side. You know, I always thought that when you're writing a song, uh, first of all, you know, it's really like a, like a mistake to overproduce the vocals uh, because you need, and, and the instruments because you need to bring the song live and you need to play it <laughs> without backing, backing tracks as possible. Um, but uh, also the vocals, uh, you know, we need to bring something like the people can remember and sing with us on the shows. So, yeah, I will say that it's like uh, melodic, melodic, heavy metal and a little bit of hard rock also. Yeah, I've been listening to it. It's quite enjoyable. I can hear, you know, like you said, some rainbow, some Dio, even some sunstorm on a song like I've been losing you, you know. Uh, and, that's you that's know, funny. And I think Crossroad, it's, Crossroad for me is the standout track. I can hear. That's you funny know, you that's mentioned you that song best. because uh, you know it's uh, it's not it's the first the first person who said that is similar to Sunstorm. But the funny thing is that's a song I wrote for Michael Schenker actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, when uh, when he told me on the last album, the Universal album, he told me to write a couple of songs, and I thought, uh, okay, so you can't write a song for Michael Schenker that it's not gonna sound like Michael Schenker. So it's kind of a thin line you can move in between of uh, of on the songwriting. Um, but I thought at the same time that there's a long time, and a lot of people were asking. Uh, about this uh, Robbie McCauley and Michael Schenker album, like a more melodic and more uh, talking about love, you know, and that kind of uh, emotions and relationships. Uh, not only like the last album, there, you know, it's typical like a heavy metal and a little bit different. So um, I wrote this song and <laughs> sadly they didn't take it for the album. <laughs> it was probably, it was too melodic for him. Um, and um, but I I, I want to I, I really wanted to give a chance to the song because I thought it was a good song. So I yeah. adapted a little bit uh, because now it's faster than the original, but it turns out in a really good like a hard rock melodic song, even more similar than uh, than Sunstorm. I I would say it's more similar to Pretty Mates probably. A, a distant shore. It's a little more of a techno thing for me. Um, no. Yeah, yeah. This is, I would say it's even more uh, oriented to the pop side. Um, that's uh, probably the it's most like it's like a Eurovision kind of uh, you know song. If again, you know that that sort of feel, right? Yeah, it's that's probably the most special song for me in the record because it's a song I wrote for my son. Uh, we were talking before. Uh, uh, we didn't met in more than two years already. Oh. Wow. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, we have a difficult relation with his mother, and uh, and uh, so I wrote a song for him, thinking in uh, for him to like the song, not only like a rock song, but and he is a huge fan of those bands like Imagine Dragons and even Coldplay and that kind of stuff. So I will, I will, I thought, okay, I will write a song thinking on on him and that he will like the song. So that's why it's a little bit different. But uh, in the end, at the end, I think it's, it really, it really fit on the uh, full story on the concept of the record. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the song Crossroad too. I mean, I, I don't think that would be out of a place on a Vandenberg album. It's got kind of got that bluesy feel to it. And yeah. it's, it's a standout track for me yeah, as well. So. Yeah, and that's another funny thing because uh, we uh, we didn't we didn't have that song at the end of the production. No. And we, yeah, we were thinking about to have an extra song, uh, a little bit uh, different. And so the the guitar player came to me and said, "I have this bluesy song," and I was like, "Not sure about it." <laughs> uh, I didn't. I was like, "Okay, I don't think it's gonna fit, but let's give it a try." So I wrote a lyric. Like it was like at five in the morning before I go to the studio. I was going to the studio that morning, like uh, nine in the morning. So five in the morning, I woke up and I wrote a lyric. Um, and then I went to the studio and I did a try. And actually, actually, all the double chorus after the solo in that song is the very first take uh, I improvised for for the song. <laughs> so, so yeah, so. <laughs> 
I recorded and then we were working on the production and it was like, okay, I think this is going to work. And, <laughs> and actually the record label, they were like, okay, this must be one of the singles. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I hear so much of, like you mentioned, the, the Ronnie James Dio era rainbow ish type of songs on the album. And, and, and you, you think like you're one of the very few people that hung out with Richie Blackmore. I mean, that, that's sort of, I mean, right? Yeah. Not many people do this, right? And even the band he was in didn't hang out with, you know, yeah. Richie Blackmore back in the Mark Two, Three, or whatever it was. I mean, what's it like being in the inner circle of, you know, do you feel like there must be this coolness a factor, right? Like you're in this inner yeah. circle and the whole world is outside. I mean, what, what's the difference between in being in the circle and not being in the circle? What did that you found? It is a huge difference, and that's for me was probably the most enjoyable thing uh, of working with with Richie, uh, because you know uh, at the end, yeah, you are on a stage and you play songs, and then you know you are you are in the Rainbow Band and all this stuff, and that's great. And there were another uh, seven, eight singers who did the same thing before, counting the Rainbow Singer and the Purple and all this stuff. Uh, you know, there was a lot of singers working with them, but. As you mentioned, it's like to be with them, um, you know, having a beer after dinner and, you know, talking about UFOs or whatever. There was the uh, topic that night uh, until three in the morning. And mm -hmm. sometimes, it, you know, he's taking the guitar and we're just singing whatever uh, from the Beatles, Queen and Deep Purple Rainbow, whatever. It comes to that moment. And... That was probably the most uh, enjoyable thing. Um, it is great. Um, obviously, all of this character that people know from Richie, like he's a tough guy and he's a difficult person and, you know, and all that stuff, is is how you see him outside the circle. And that's, a, in my opinion, there's a character and he behaved that way to keep the people away. Which is which is very uh, understandable in the way that there is a lot of people trying to get in the circle. You know, yeah. Um, so it's totally understandable. But when you are in, is a very nice guy. Is very loyal. Is very is uh, um, very cool. He he treats you really well. I I don't have like, if I think about it, nothing to do, nothing to say bad about Richie Blackmore uh, during the five six years we worked together. Even with my family, you know, they were all nice. All the people that were great, they would treat me like, like a very good, very good. So yeah, it's uh, it's very um, it's very interesting. So he's a notorious practical joker. Did he play any jokes on you? <laughs> yeah, all the time is 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 um, is all the time is proving uh, is putting you in the in a in a in a proof. Like you know, what do you think about certain things? Uh, how are you gonna react to certain things? So it's always tempting you, like, you know, he's talking. Are you allowed, are, are you allowed to disagree with him? Oh, uh, I mean, you can have disagreement with him. Okay. Uh, but he remembered the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool, you know, it's because he's a very smart, uh, very clever person, you know. So um, it's, it's very challenging to have a chat with him because, you know, you are all the time, you need to be in the same level. And I like that uh, because I'm probably the same kind of people. So... Um, but yeah, he's, he's joking all the time and, and sometimes he's telling jokes, very clever jokes that because of my English, especially at that time, because when I met Richie for the first time, I didn't talk English at all. I was like a oh, serial. So, so he was telling jokes and I was just like, you know, question mark and, um, and he was doing it on purpose that I don't understand, you know? <laughs> so, so, but, uh, yeah, I remember one day, uh, it was on the first tour and it was like the welcome joke. Um, so I was I was going for running every morning, and then when I came back one of the days, my my hotel room it was full of garbage. Uh, it was because I let the window open, and and he was he was throwing garbage inside the uh, inside the room. So I, when I came in back to the room and I saw all of this, I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" So I looked through the window, and he was he was outside, like saying, "Hello, welcome to the band." You know? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> how did you connect with Richie? Like, how does one go about singing for Richie Blackmore? Like, 
It was it through his wife. Or, or, like, how did you get that call or that email or that text? Yeah, I get the, I get the um, I get uh, the first communication was with Candice because um, everything related to technology, uh, Richie is totally out. You know, he doesn't want to. He doesn't have a phone. You know, he doesn't have a computer. So, uh, so it was with still, the, still. Is, is that the same? I think the, I think that uh, the last time we met. On 2019, he was starting to use like an iPod, but just to listen music. Okay. Uh, He's got a flip phone. He, probably only like a, <laughs> like a, yeah, like a, a rotary like house line. No, not even a phone, a cell phone. Oh, yeah, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, like a landline, something like that. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, I got the first communication with the with the wife. Then I met him in person and in Munich, and um, yeah, it was very nice. I think we had a kind of a very good, and I wouldn't say special, but like a good relation uh, relationship. Uh, you know, he was very nice with me and and very protective in the way he was telling me, you know, be careful with this, don't do that, you know, do this or you know that kind of stuff. He was he was very nice with me all the time. That's good. To so with the, with this album, what's the goal moving forward? Is this uh going to concentrate more on a solo career or you're still going to have all the bands that you've, uh, you know, like Elegant, uh, elegant with, weapons. Uh, with Richie Faulkner? Is that Elegant Weapons? Uh, what's what's the plan in the future here? Well, uh, obviously to be focused on less. Um, there was a bunch of uh, side projects uh, I was doing before that probably not going to take uh, any step forward anymore, especially uh, the ferryman and probably sandstorm also and all this all the collaborations I was doing before also because I want to be focused on the future and uh, that's why I quit Mike and Schenker at the same time you know because I thought it was my time playing covers with uh, with all those legends is over uh, I had a I had a great time with Richie and with Michael probably with to Richie I. You know, is um, uh, is is the reason that I'm I can I can be a professional right now. You put me on the spot and give me the chance to to do something on the music. But um, I think that time is over. Uh, I did that, you know, and 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 that's it. I need to move on. And so yeah, uh, I will be more focused on the things that I can I can think uh, I can think and move forward through the years, especially Lords of Black, which is my band and. Elegant Weapons, because, you know, the album was great, um, well received, uh, we did a great tour, we're planning to do a second album, and especially my solo career, um, it, that's going to be the main thing, actually the main thing for the next year is just uh, uh, making tours with, with this album, so, yeah. So so you're going to continue, like, I'll, like is Elegant Weapons uh, a, more of a project, or is it becoming a band a permanent band that you're at least you're hoping it to become that, uh, that, was, the, that was the idea from the beginning so yeah. uh, obviously obviously there is a moment where you need to figure it out and you need to try if it works or not but actually with elegant weapons what we found when we did this tour in june july yeah is 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 i mean the, the album works really well the people they really like and they love the band um we were playing we were playing a tour just one week after the release of the album. So the people, they didn't have really like a time to listen to the album. But anyway, the people, they were enjoying very much the shows and and and, and the songs, they were they were like enjoying the songs. So we were very surprised about that. Uh, so we think uh, we think that this is something like uh, we can we can build on more, in a more solid way. And uh, we have the support of a, of a nice record label like Nuclear. So, so yeah, now we're actually thinking on the second record already. Scott Travis, he was in and he was out. He was in. Like, what happened there? Like, uh, just... it was. Um, you need to think that this album it was recorded during the pandemic. Um, okay. Actually, I recorded twenty twenty one. The vocals and the album was already recorded by Scott and Rex. Uh, especially Rex, it didn't. It didn't know that he will tour with Pantera after. Right. Oh, so, you know. Uh, and then Scott, it was the same. He was during the pandemic. He was he was doing this, in, but nobody knew that. You know that Judas Priest will come with another new album and then a tour and all this stuff. 
So uh, when all the plans were clear, uh, Scott and Rex, they say, listen, we cannot do this because we need to commit with the main project. So, so, um, but that was it, you know, um, nothing, no hard feelings. I mean, nothing to do with that. You know, I'm glad to hear you're, you're focusing on your career, your solo career. And, and it, is, was there ever times you felt a little overexposed with all these different bands that you played with? I never thought, I never thought in that way, actually. Um, I was just, uh, I was just enjoying, um, you know, it's really hard to say no to all those musicians yeah. that I was working exactly. with last years, you know, uh, especially uh, after, after Blackmore, when Vandenberg came and, and, and then Michael Schenker at the same time, it was so hard. What to else do you need? To. Like, geez, it's like. Who are you so, missing? You're missing Evie Malmstein. That's who you're missing. Uh, uh, I was never interested because of the stories I heard. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, probably Tony Ayomi will be the only one that I That's right. That's right. Uh, still have on my to-do list. <laughs> you never know. You might call. You never know. You uh, he was very happy know. with the cover I did. Um, and and he, he talked to us like you know we did this uh, the shining on my on my yeah. cover mm, and uh, yeah. and he posted on his Twitter and he said that was that's a great cover thank you very much and all stuff so yeah you never know <laughs> have you ever gotten any calls from anyone else that you were surprised that you just said you know not now it's not because you didn't like them but you just said this is just too much. Uh, you know, like an angry there, was, there, is, type. There, there was a couple there was a couple of things uh that uh i i needed to say no because it was i thought it would, would be too much um and um you know cool people and people that i like also uh but yeah. uh i think you know because i move i move i move be, i move for you know the feelings and 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 for me it's very important to have a good feeling but with something is like uh only about business and you know how much is gonna be your fee? Like the first word is, the first question is like, how much are you gonna charge? It's like, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't even listen to the songs to tell you if I like it or not. You know? Yeah, yeah, they want <laughs> your fee up front. Right. My phone to see if we can hang together. You know, so um, so that kind of things I don't like it. Um, and I and I say no to a couple of guys. No hard feelings mm -hmm. also. But it was, I was pretty clear that for me, it's very important to be comfortable working with the people. And so I say no. You, you I know, mean, your voice, no matter what you do, your voice is fantastic. What, what's your secret? What's, uh, how, how do you preserve that powerful voice of yours? <laughs> well, I, uh, the secret is uh, there is no secrets. Um, it's very simple. Um, besides, I never took vocal lessons in my life. Um, um, I learned, I learn, you know, just practicing and so there is a lot of practice behind there's a lot of hard work in that way you need to spend a lot of time and and then obviously to have a healthy way of life uh, that's very important because the most of the singers they prepare for a recording or they prepare for a tour but if you are taking care of your body through all the year you don't need to be especially prepared for anything so because you are prepared all the time so that's that's will be something like i will say to to other singers you know um i have a healthy uh way of life you know i go a lot of i do a lot of sports and and we, with my wife we eat very healthy we are not that kind of a vegan or vegetarian kind of stuff we eat everything but you know in a healthy way um and you know and and that's it and to, and to be happy you know the, it's, it probably is stupid to say but uh is is the main thing and you need to love what you're doing and you need to be happy with and that's why probably the people say ah oh, you're doing too much or you're working with too much people because i'm happy doing it it just like you know i was reading the article about when you're talking about it you went through your down your down your, your darkness let's say uh you know and i could see the too many lies too many masters the title and you know you're the suicide and, and i mean again you just talk about what you want to talk about but you don't come across that way. You know, you, you really come across as a positive guy who's, I mean, what could drive you? Was it the fan negativity, the comments? It was just the pressure of too much work. What what brings you to that low point? 
because I just don't see you like that. And I, I just, I, um, I mean, yeah. if you want to talk about it, if you want to talk yeah, about yeah, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to push you. I'm glad you asked. Um, well, there was a mix of a lot of things. Uh, there was a there was a bad period of my life in terms of, uh, I mean, all the aspects. Well, it was a it was a sum of everything coming at the same time because some. I mean, the most of the times you can deal with certain things when it comes, like you know, in, in your personal life, you have a problem, you can deal with it. Or if you have a problem on your in your work, you can deal with that if you are okay in your family. But when you have everything coming at the same time. And 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 I'm not, not only that. I was I was really disappointed about about people, how people behave, um, and that's actually part of also the title of of the album because I felt, uh, especially in 2021, 22, I felt like the people they don't care of each other anymore. They don't care. They don't care about anybody. They can, I mean, they say whatever they think they can say about you. I was, I, you know, I was having this personal problem with uh, my ex-wife. Um, and she did a complaint about, uh, um, she said that I was threatening to death to her, uh, which is totally a lie. Actually, two weeks ago, uh, uh, they uh, disclaimed the, uh, this, this complaint. So it's totally, everything's totally solved, but because it was not true. But he was not only doing that. He was putting the news, uh, she was going to the television to say that, talking about me. So obviously the people uh, who was listening and watching this, they was calling me whatever they wanted me, they wanted me to call. You know, so it was, they were telling me criminal, they were telling me that I, I would be in jail, um, uh, you know, many horrible things that I felt I, I didn't deserve. Because I'm not a bad person, I feel that I'm not a, a bad person, you know. So, um, so if you if you take that, and at the same time we're coming from the uh, from the COVID, which was a very hard time for musicians, uh, and also you see, I mean, you see on the social all those comments. We were being we've been we've been bull uh, having like a bullying with if, even with my wife, you know, even my wife she was she was getting messages nasty messages like you know you are married with this criminal and every it was happening every morning you know uh, jeez um so obviously there is a, obviously also i was missing my kid because sure. you know, uh, i couldn't talk to him i couldn't see him i was not allowed to to even send him a message to see how is it going you know so during a couple of months uh, your wife is working every day and you have a lot of time alone at home overthinking all of that. And uh, and you lost hope uh, on people, you lost hope on yourself, and you start to think that you are the problem. So if you think that you are the problem, the solution is, okay, if I am the problem, I'm going to release everybody from the problem. And that was the way of thinking. Um, uh, gladly and luckily, I have my wife with me. And she was she was uh, taking me out of that uh, out of that darkness I was I was going through, but uh, it was it was really hard uh, it was really hard to to manage especially because uh, as I tell as I told you before I think that I'm a not probably the best person in the world I'm not the Dalai Lama but um, you know I have my I have my things so <laughs> you know I have my behavior also you know I'm not perfect person but. I did mistakes and uh, through my life and everything, but I'm not a bad person also. And I just felt that I didn't deserve that treatment. Even even today, you know, the people is talking about that. And and it, it happened especially when I went to- it, it, it's, it was, it's like once it's out there, people, no matter if it's true or not, people yeah. still push you and push you. And, 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 and it's just, it's horrible. They don't care. Like, I, I, they yeah, the people, they don't care. Um, you know, R Russell Brand's going through that right now. We're anxious to see how that turns out, right? It just takes a few people to, to bring stuff up, and then you see if it uh, if it gathers momentum or not. So, sorry, I cut you off uh, there, uh, um, Ronnie. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, but now I'm I'm okay. You know, I have my wife. She is a very strong person, and she was supporting me. And uh, now all the legal things are getting solved because you know we proved that it was not true. Um, so hopefully. In a couple of months, I will have the chance to talk to my kid again, and, and that will, yeah. will be okay. Yeah. 
And what I've you learned, know, Ronnie, is, you know, you know yourself, you know the type of person you are inside. Nobody can take that away from you. And yeah. there's stuff that you can't control. You just got to let that go and focus on the stuff that you can not control. That's that's what I've learned in, in my life. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I find that public figures are sometimes the loneliest and the saddest, even though they're loved by so many fans. It's crazy. Well, because I think it's because of uh, is, um, um, is a mistake of think that the most of the people, they think that because you are a public person, they can say whatever they want. And that's not true. I mean... I'm pretty much okay with criticism where, you know, they're talking about my career and my voice or my band or my music, whatever it is. Obviously, it's part of the job that people, they can say, I don't like you or I don't like your band or you are in too many projects or whatever it is. And I'm pretty much okay with that. You know, it's part of the game. Uh, but when somebody who never met me in person comes and tells me you are an asshole, or as I told you before, you are a criminal. You should be in jail. That's that's it shouldn't be allowed. You know that, that's yeah. that's 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 not correct. That shouldn't be. Uh, um, so yeah, hopefully in the future, um, all these anonymous accounts gonna end it up. You know, and 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 at least the social to open a profile, you're gonna need your ID, and and all those problems problems gonna going to end it up in that in, in that yeah moment. yeah 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 you know uh, actually i had a last question on michael shanker did yeah. he ever talk about his brother did he ever talk because <laughs> every time we we talk to michael shanker he just give and we ask him about his brother he just goes on for hours he goes on for hours yeah. he doesn't stop he's so mad at him is he do you know yeah, he's gotten kinda, over it he's okay now do you know yeah but you know i mean I, I i'm not in his head but yeah it's just a joke it's just a joke it's just a joke it's just a but joke. yeah yeah he obviously has a it must be something but uh, you know the the funny thing is i met uh rudolph uh like two mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. and um we were playing the same festival and then the manager came uh, scorpions manager came to my room to my dressing room and he said you are running you play with michael right and I said yeah oh, nice to meet you i'm the scorpions manager I'm, i want to introduce you to to rudolph so we went to his dressing room and he was uh, such a nice guy and he was talking really good about Michael. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying this such an amazing and talented guitar player he is great. He's doing great now. Blah, blah, I want to say hi when you see him and blah, blah, whatever. Then I came back to Michael and, uh, and I say, Michael, I, I met Rudolf uh, last weekend and uh, he say, he told me to say hi to you. And he was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> okay. That's not my okay, business. never mind. <laughs> I love them both. I love them both. On the yeah, record, yeah. I love them both. Michael's amazing. Both. We, we, we got to see him on the last time. And I mean, he played for three hours straight. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah I mean, he's, yeah. Probably, he's probably the most amazing musician I play with. Um, considering he's celebrating 50 years of career, we did a tour in the U.S. for, we did like a 28 shows in a month. Wow. Wow. It didn't miss any single note, any of the shows. It's just amazing. Um, I don't know how he do that, but I was amazed every night just watching while he was playing the solos on the songs. I was watching him like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> it's amazing. Crazy. And he doesn't play for 45 minutes, right? No. I mean. No, it's two hours, two hours show. This yeah. guy is a workhorse, man. In Rock and, Bottom, know, he, 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 just, he does like a 10-minute solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he keeps no, cranking out albums. He's I've writing and writing and writing and touring. He never amazing. stops, man. He's amazing. Yeah. He's just amazing. I guess on that note, uh, Ronnie, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you on tour, hopefully with Elegant Weapons or your solo album. We're in Canada, just so you know. Hopefully you okay. guys, you'll come around here one day. Um and the I'm album. glad things are getting better for you. I'm glad you're feeling good. Stay positive. Thank and you. it's been a pleasure really speaking to you for the first time, Thank Ronnie. You. Yeah. Thank if you. you're ever feeling down, just call us up. We'll uh, cheer you up. We'll, uh... <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> too many lies, too many masters. It's already out. Uh, Frontiers. It was released, yeah, on Frontiers. It was released on September the 15th. Pick it up. Check out Ronnie Romero on tour. Thank you for everything, Ronnie. Thank you.